Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we'll be taking a look at working with lighting using the Octane integration for Unity. And for this scene, I'm using the installer scene, which consists of this UFO above the plane with kind of an outdoor lighting setup. So I have Octane installed and loaded. So let's go over here to the hierarchy view, select PBR render target, and go to the inspector and press render. And it will compile, and once it's compiled, you can see here's the UFO above the plane. And you can see we have some simple lighting in the scene already. We have a daylight system lighting the background. And then we have some emissive shaders, like at the center of the UFO. You can see how it is lighting the plane and also bouncing off of the, the roughness that forms the Unity logo here. And we also have some other lights on the inside. These are all emissive shaders. And we have a couple other items in the scene. So we have uh, a couple point lights. If I zoom out a little bit, we have one point light that is fairly large. So you can see it encompasses this area right here and another point light. And these are fairly low in terms of their settings. So they're quite subtle. So let's turn these off for just a second. So I'm gonna select it in the hierarchy and in the inspector, I wanna turn both of these off. because so I just wanna take a look at working with the daylight system. The daylight system is controlled by the directional light that's in the scene. And this is a standard Unity directional light. So you can see here's the icon right here. And if I start to rotate this, I'll press the E key for the rotate tool and then start to rotate it around. And you can see how it affects the lighting in the scene. If I have it pointing downwards, then it's kind of like the sun is above our scene and we get more of a bright kind of afternoon lighting. And as I rotate it more horizontal to the plane, you'll see that we get, it's almost like the sun is setting. So we rotate around here. What I should do is I'm gonna go into the PBR render target here and set my camera to editor. That way we can see the effect as we rotate in the scene. So, so I've expanded the camera folder and I'll set the select camera menu to editor. And now we can see that when I tumble in the scene, it updates in the PBR render target as well. So I can rotate around until we can actually see the sun there. Select my directional light. Let's move it over. The position of the directional light in the scene doesn't matter so much, it's just the rotation. So you can see there's the update. And if I rotate it so that it's pointing upwards, it basically turned the scene into a nighttime setup. And that'll work well because I just kind of want to isolate the visibility of the lights and their effect on the scene. Right now the scene is being lit just by the emissive shaders that are applied to the surface of the UFO. So let's select one of the point lights here. I'll select this one and turn it back on. And we can see that here is the range which can be controlled by grabbing any of these points on the circle and expanding it. You can see in the Unity scene it updates. We have a dim lighting here on the UFO and you can also see that it's uh, affecting the scene. So I zoom in here, you can see the light on the UFO. We can also see a reflection of that point light down here. And we can also control its uh, range numerically using this field in the inspector. We can set the intensity. Right now the intensity is set to two. So if I set this to uh, 0.5, it's clearly gonna be much dimmer. Let's set it to one. And you can see it's kind of subtle. The closer it gets to the object, the more light we'll see on the surface. So I'll move it down here. And I currently have the sample set to 500. If I increase this, it will continue to render and you'll see less noise in the scene as it renders. So now let's take a look at an area light. So let's zoom out here and I'm gonna turn off the point light and go to the game object menu and choose light, area light. I'm gonna press W for the move tool so I can move it up. Go into the inspector and let's set the width and height to 200 since this is a fairly large scene. You can see that now we have the plane there and I can grab these handles and increase the size of the area light. And unlike the point light, the rotation of the area light, of course, is gonna change the direction in which it casts light. So you can see the effect here 
on the surface of the UFO. And if I zoom out, you can see a reflection of the area light down here. And if I set the intensity to say two, the light will get much brighter. I can also adjust the color just for fun. We'll set this to kind of a yellowish color. And you can see the effect on the spaceship. And of course, we also have spotlights. So I'm going to turn off the area light, go to the game object menu and choose light spotlight. Press W for the move tool and I'll move this up and let's set the range to 200 so you can see the manipulator and then I can expand the manipulator. You see this little dot down here. I'm going to grab this and pull down so it expands the range downward. And let's rotate the light. I want to make sure that I have this going all the way through the spaceship down to the ground below. Set this to wireframe. So a nice wide spot. And I'm going to set the intensity to 25. And you can see the effect here on the spaceship. We can rotate it out. We can move it out. And there you can see the effect. So you can see Unity lights are very easy to use and they look good, but I think you get more creative control and better results when you apply emissive shader to geometry into the scene, kind of like what we have in the engine of our UFO here. So let's check out how we can do that. So let's go to the game object menu and choose 3D object sphere to add a sphere. I'm going to switch to the move tool by pressing W and then move this up. Switch to scale by pressing R and scale it up so that we can see it above the uh, UFO here. So let's go to the project tab and let's actually stick this over here. I'm just going to create a new material right here. So right click and choose Create uh, Material. We'll just call this Emissive. And I'm going to drag the Emissive Material on top of my sphere. So you can see in the inspector for the sphere, the material is applied right down here. It's called Emissive. So let's expand this. So as you can see, this is a standard Unity shader. So I can turn on Emission right here and then apply a color to it and you'll see that it kind of comes in as sort of this dim pinkish white. If I go over to the intensity setting here and set this above one, it'll go into the high dynamic range. So if I set this to 10, that's 100. That's a bit more than we need. You can see it is pretty effective though. Let's do 10. That's a bit more reasonable. And you can see here and it's reflected on the surfaces and it is emitting light into the scene. And I can click on this button here for the color marker and change the color. You'll see that by changing the color, of course, I'm also going to be changing the intensity, which makes sense logically. So if I put it up here towards the top, we get back towards that intensity of 10. As I bring it down, it's going to change the color, but it's also going to lower the intensity. Now we can access some more advanced features by converting this to an octane material and making that material emissive. So to do that, I'll go into the inspector for the material and using the shader menu, I'll set this to octane PBR override. And now it's an octane material, so it's going to appear kind of dark in the scene. Uh, I'm going to press the view source button down here. This opens up the octane node editor. You can see a copy of the render is being calculated up here. And the material out node is what is going to connect the shader to Unity. I'm going to right click and from the menu, I'm going to choose materials, diffuse, and connect this to material out. Let's expand this so we can see the actual node inspector. And then I'm going to select my diffuse material and go down to the emission setting and set this from no node to texture emission. 
You actually have two different choices, and both of them work. They kind of depend on what you prefer. Uh, we can use either texture emission or black body. Black body will use more physically accurate inputs, such as temperature. Texture allows us to use a little bit more simpler control, but has a similar effect. You can use colors, or you can also use textures. So if I click on the texture here, and let's make this green, and pull it up a little bit, and then I can, can, I can activate surface brightness, which means the brightness of the surface will be affected by the scale of the object in the scene. It's a little bit more obvious to see what's going on down here, how it's affecting the scene. And then, of course, I can also control the power and make this very, very bright so you can see how much it's lighting the scene there. Let's make this blue because I'm finding that green color starting to be a little bit disturbing. And just to get a little bit more fancy, let's go down to distribution here and set distribution to turbulence. I'm gonna expand this. You can see how that turbulence is kind of creating an effect, on the lighting on the object, the surface of the object. And we can start to play with things like the omega and the octaves and you can get some really interesting effect by connecting a procedural texture to the distribution. Let's bring the omega down here and increase the octaves. So we can close this and take a look at the effect in our scene. And of course, this object can be moved around and animated and so on. And I do have post-processing enabled, so you'll see a little bit of lens flare here on the light as well, adding to that spacey effect. So that covers the basics of working with lights in the Octane integration for Unity. So once again, thanks very much for watching.